Hello everyone, this is an overview video of AWS Application Composer. If you're looking for an easy and visual way to build your AWS infrastructure, then this is the video for you. In terms of the agenda for today's video, we're going to cover a couple things. The first is what is Application Composer? The second section is on some of the core features that you should know about using this tool. The third is on some of the concerns and drawbacks I have with using Application Composer. And then finally, we're going to do a console walkthrough where I show you how to set up a project and use Application Composer for a real life architecture. So that's what the agenda is for this video. Let's jump into what is Application Composer. So some things in life are best described with a photograph or a picture. And I think Application Composer is one of those things. So here is a photo of Application Composer in action. So as you can see in the center of the screen, we have a canvas style editor where you can drag and drop different AWS infrastructure components together to create linkages. And that's what AWS Application Composer is all about. It's a visual tool that helps you lay out different elements of an application architecture and then link them together through these intuitive linkages between these components and it's purely a visual experience. So the center canvas area is where you're going to drop in all your components and where you're going to link everything together. The left hand side here, like you can see where my mouse is, uh, this is where you're going to be dragging in all your different components that are available to you using Application Composer. Now, currently, there's only a subset of AWS services that are available in this list. So some of the most common ones, like as you can see in the photo, API Gateway, Cognito User Pools, DynamoDB, Lambda Functions, all that kind of stuff is offered here. And it's particularly aimed at serverless applications. So all of the different services that you are going to be able to use with this tool are all serverless AWS services. So this is the, the main idea with Application Composer. And in terms of kind of what problems does this solve? Well, for me personally, I'm a really visual style learner and I like to see things laid out in front of me as a picture in order for me to completely grasp them. And if you're similar and you're having maybe trouble writing infrastructure as code and linking everything together, then this is a perfect tool for you. It's a real visual workflow where you get to drag in these different components, make sure that they're all linked up together. And then at the end of it, you get a CloudFormation file that you can go and use to deploy all your infrastructure. Second, it's great in terms of speed. If you were to have to develop this application locally, either in the AWS console or using something like CloudFormation or CDK, there's a lot of documentation that you're going to have to go through to figure out how to link all these things together, how to set them up correctly, and make sure that your infrastructure as code will even build. So this takes a lot of the guesswork out of the way. Using this tool, you know that if, for example, you're linking an S3 bucket and a Lambda function, the CloudFormation code that it generates is definitely definitely going to be correct. And the final great thing about working with Application Composer is that it lets you worry about the what instead of the how. So the what being the particular type of business problem that you're trying to solve or the particular type of architecture or infrastructure that you're trying to build. Instead of having to worry about how to wire everything together and what settings to use, all of that is kind of handled for you so you can really focus on your business problem instead of the semantics of setting up your infrastructure. So that's what AWS Application Composer is. I want to jump into now some additional features that you should know about. So like I was mentioning, Application Composer, in addition to generating the visual canvas style editor, it also generates a CloudFormation or SAM template file that you can deploy using AWS CloudFormation or even bring into your local project where you can use the CloudFormation snippets that Application Composer generates and then bring them over into your project so that you can have all that stuff in source control. So that's one of the Big ones. It would be nice if this kind of feature was built into Application Composer, but that's not really what it's designed for. And that's kind of one of my concerns in the drawback section, which we'll get to a little bit later. Now, the second one is that you can also, if you have CloudFormation files elsewhere, maybe from a different project or something like that, you can import CloudFormation files directly into Application Composer. And this is great if you already have an existing project and maybe you'd like to make some amendments to it. Maybe you'd like to just visualize what it's actually doing in a Canvas editor automatically. That's another interesting feature of using Application Composer. The third one is that there's this feature called Connected Mode. And the Connected Mode is an experience that happens in the AWS console, where as you're using Application Composer in your browser, you can synchronize it with your local file system on your computer. So what that means is that the CloudFormation file that Application Composer generates will be automatically synced into your project. And if you're using something like a Lambda function, for example, 
example, in Application Composer, you can also write your code directly on your home machine and have that be synchronized with the Application Composer project. So pretty cool stuff that you can do. You can pretty much build your entire application in Application Composer, grab all the content, and then bring it into CloudFormation to deploy it later. Now, another great feature about Application Composer is that it's free to use. It doesn't cost you anything at all. You can go and try it today. It's currently in preview mode in the six most popular AWS regions, but it costs you absolutely nothing to try out right now. So that's a little bit about what is Application Composer and some of the features. I do want to talk about some of the drawbacks. Some of them you may be able to guess based on what I've already said, but let's cover them more concretely one by one. Now, the first kind of problem or concern that I have with Application Composer is that there's no deployment options. So you're going to be, you know, using the tool, dragging your stuff in there, making all the connections, generating this pretty CloudFormation file. But then when it comes time to deploy, it's kind of you're hung out to dry. Uh, you need to figure that out yourself. It would be really nice if in this tool you can click one button and it automatically deploys for you. So not only are you creating your application, but you're also deploying it out to AWS all in one. So maybe that's to come in the future, not sure, but it would be nice if they address that directly. The next one is that it only includes a subset of AWS services. Now I do realize that it's advertised as being mostly for serverless AWS infrastructure services, but it would be nice if they can incorporate the entire suite of what AWS has to offer. Now the third one is that some service settings are unfortunately unavailable. So not only do you have access to only a subset of AWS services, but within certain services, you're not able to use certain features. So for example, you're able to create a DynamoDB table using Application Composer, but you can't specify more advanced settings. So things like the payment mode, if you want it pay per request or provision billing, or if you want a global secondary index, for example. You can do some of the most basic things like creating your partition key and your sort key and all that. But some of the more advanced settings, you're going to have to either do it later or modify your CloudFormation file directly, which kind of defeats the purpose of using Application Composer in the first place. Not sure if this is because it's currently in preview mode, but hopefully they enrich some of the different services so that you have access to the full gambit of all the settings that are available. And the fourth one that I have is that complex use cases can be difficult to model. Now this does depend on certain AWS services. So I was tinkering around with AWS step functions, trying to build within Application Composer a visual step function. It got really complicated and I wasn't really happy with how it was working. So more complex use cases, you're probably best off just sticking to CloudFormation or doing it manually in the console. Now I've played with Application Composer a lot and I'm struggling to really figure out where it fits in. Uh, I do see it as something that's easy to use to whiteboard certain application solutions and just make sure that everything's connecting uh, correctly and you know supported. But from what I gather, I feel like this tool is best suited for generating smallish snippets of CloudFormation YAML files that you can eventually bring into your project. I find that having to look through all the different uh, parameters and settings when you're trying to create something in CloudFormation is often very frustrating. And this tool does all of that stuff for you. As we'll see in the demo section, if you're trying to do something maybe a little bit more fancy, like setting up a DynamoDB stream with a Lambda function, it's very simple. You just drag and drop that, and then it generates all the CloudFormation code for you directly without you having to understand all the documentation and all the details of the connection. So that's kind of where I see this fitting in, at least in my workflow. I'd love to hear more. If you've tried this out, let me know what you think in the comment section of this video. So that's it for the overview of this service. I'm going to meet you over in the AWS console. We're going to try this thing out and build a quick little application. All right, everyone. So here we are in the AWS console. Let's head over into Application Composer now to get started with using the tool. So we're just going to type in Application Composer and click on it there and let this load. All right, so this is the default experience. As you can see, AWS Application Composer is currently in preview. Uh, you can read about some of the different options and features that it has available here, but I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to use it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to create project over on the right-hand side here. 
And this is gonna give us a prompt that asks us, basically, uh, do we wanna start a brand new project, load an existing, and do we wanna link it to a local file directory? Uh, so I'm gonna say load a new blank project here. Now, if you are using either Chrome or I believe Microsoft Edge, who uses Edge these days, am I right? But anyways, uh, it's unfortunately this doesn't work for Firefox. There is this connected and unconnected mode. The connected mode will synchronize the files that you generate in Application Composer from your browser into your local file system. So it'll synchronize your YAML file, which is your CloudFormation file. Um, for if you have a Lambda function, you'll be able to write your code on a file, maybe in something like Visual Studio Code, and all of that will be synchronized with Application Composer here. So that's an interesting feature, and if you want to use that, all you have to do is click on Select a Folder, and then it's gonna automatically prompt you to select uh, where you'd like to store it. You can also use the unconnected mode. The catch with the unconnected mode is that in order to save your project, you're gonna have to download a CloudFormation file. In fact, that's what the Save button does if you were to click it um, in the unconnected mode. So that's what we're gonna use for this. Uh, let me just maybe show you what this looks like so you would just select a folder here sure we can set it to this folder and then it's giving us a prompt here do you want to yeah it's going to be able to view the files that's fine and we can say uh, we can go ahead and create here of course chrome is warning us about the implications of doing this all right, so this is the Application Composer Studio. So you can, of course, do a quick tour. It's gonna to show you a bunch of the different features that it has available, but let me just walk you through what's going on here. All right, so the center is obviously the Canvas style section here. Uh, let's first actually drop in a component. So we're gonna get a S3 bucket and drop this in here. And so now we're in the canvas section. If you click on this and then you go to details, you can specify some of the parameters of this component. So I clicked on details. Now we can, okay, once uh, CloudFormation logical ID, let's call this um, pictures. I think that's what I had in my original screenshot from the PowerPoint. Um, you can see here that it does have some options that you can select from. And this is kind of what I was talking about in terms of the drawbacks. There's only a very few subset of options here. Uh, I'd like to see a lot more capabilities that you can define directly using Application Composer. Anyways, we're gonna save on that. And now if you go into the template section, you'll be able to see that this is all the CloudFormation code that was generated for us. So you can see we have that pictures, which is an S3 bucket. You see all the details, all the properties that it's filling out. And you can of course change some of this stuff directly in CloudFormation if you want, but having to do this manually, create the bucket policy and set everything up correctly here, would be very, very time consuming. So hopefully you can see some of the benefits of using a tool like this. And this is just for one resource. It's gonna get much more complicated when we add a couple more, which we'll do right now. All right, so let's go back to the canvas editor here. All right, so we have pictures. Now we want to have some kind of Lambda function that's gonna trigger off of when any upload occurs in our S3 pictures bucket. So let's click and drag on the Lambda function widget here. And we're just gonna drag and drop this guy and now these two things are connected. And we can group these together if you hold shift and you click, you can do group here if you want. Uh, you, I guess you can build some really large applications here so it may be useful to organize them that way. And so if we click on the Lambda function now, you can start to see some of the details that it has available. So we can call this whatever name we want, picture processor. And then you can see, um, you can select the package type. You want it to be a zip or a Docker image, the path to your folder. We're gonna set this to be, you know, you can do whatever you want, but Python is fine. The name of your handler, any layers, that's way too much memory. Let's lower that down. Um, provision concurrency. So you can see this has, uh, Lambda functions have a lot more options that are available to you. And when you when you actually look at the CloudFormation code now, it's setting up the linkage between your S3 bucket and your Lambda function. So that anytime a object is created in your S3 bucket, it's going to invoke your Lambda function. So we can actually see that uh, in our CloudFormation code here, if we scroll down, here is our function, which is a serverless function. And you can see in the events section of this function, we're listening for object created and object removed events from this S3 bucket. So if we only care about created, we can very easily just go ahead and delete that. So now we're only gonna have access to created events. So this is how you can modify the generated CloudFormation file very easily to get the functionality that you really want. All right, let's keep on going here. And so let's say now with our function processor, we also wanted to interact with a DynamoDB table. So let's put our DynamoDB table in here. 
And if we scroll over, let's link these two guys together. And we wanna specify some details here. Let's call this the pictures um, uh, table, that's fine. You could set the partition key. We're gonna call this picture ID. And this is where you can see like, this is all the options that you have available to you when you're creating a DynamoDB table here. If you watch any of my other videos, you know there's a lot more uh, that this has to offer in terms of DynamoDB configuration. So it's sad to see that you only have access to these small uh, settings as well. I already have a pictures. I don't see a pictures. Ah, pictures table, of course I do. All right, let's just name that pictures table. Of course, this was named pictures as well. And now if we go back to our Lambda function, you'll be able to see as well, it also gave us all the permissions that we need in order to interact with our DynamoDB table here. Oops, I just closed it there. Uh, so if we scroll back down and we look at permissions, it has a DynamoDB CRUD policy with access to our pictures table. So this is some of the other cool stuff that it does for you for free. And then if you want, you can just click on this arrange button to arrange this nicely. If this thing kind of goes crazy, you can always like bring it back to a reasonable format here. But this is basically application composer in action. Um, you can now go and grab the template file, either save this, copy this to your clipboard. If you're using connected mode, it's automatically gonna be synchronized with your directory. So you can just go and grab this template file, bring it into CloudFormation and create a new stack. Or alternatively, if you have a SAM or already a CloudFormation project set up uh, in the directory where you synchronize this file with, you could just run a command like SAM build and SAM deploy to automatically deploy this infrastructure into AWS. Uh, so that's a little bit of a tour of application composer in general and using it to build a relatively simple architecture here. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below and thanks so much. I'll see you next time.